Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to sum columns based on criteria and column header in Excel. In this video, I'll go through the steps to sum columns based on specific criteria. Let's get started. So let's take a look at an example. On your screen, you can see a table containing sales data. We have the store number, the location, the total sales, total returns, number of employees, and the number of cars. On the right hand side, uh, we have a list, a drop down list. And when you select the store number, let's say I select store number four, uh, and then I select, let's say, total returns, uh, it calculates the total returns for that particular uh, store number. And on your screen, it says 6700. Let's take a look if it's, that is true. So, store number 104. Total return, we have one here, and then one here, and one here, another one here, and then another one here. When you look down here to the bottom right corner, it says 6700, uh, which is uh, the case. Now, if I go back and say, okay, for store number three, I want the number of cars in store number three. It says it's 73. Let's go ahead and check. We have one here, and then another one here, here, and then here. So for store number three and then the last one here uh, down here it says 73 and that matches the 73 here okay so how do we write our formula to be able to give us this uh result i'm going to jump onto a blank sheet and then try to rewrite the formula again for you to see now we need a drop down for the store numbers so the store numbers click in the cell for the store numbers go to data data validation change the allow to list to, and then the source you go and specify where the source is the source is in column c right here from c4 so press the cell first cell shift control down arrow to select everything and then click on ok so you can select the store numbers we have four stores here so now let's create the different uh, data validation list for what we are trying to report on okay so again instead of going to data and then val data validation i'm going to use a shortcut alt dl alt dl brings the window and then you go ahead and select the list specify where the metric we are trying to report is located so it's located at the top here i want to sum these for the selected store number here so click on ok and then we have it so here we can select number of employees total returns and all that kind of thing so now our next step is to write the formula so we are going to use the sum if formula the sum if with an s formula to calculate the total returns for store number 104 so i'm going to click in this cell and equal and then start putting in my formula equal to sum if if that is sum if with an s the second one so the first argument or the first input that the sum ifs is looking for is a sum range so we want to sum the total returns so we have to select this right here so from f4 to the end now the next is a criteria range the criteria we are looking for is the store number 104 but the range where we find the store number 104 is column c right here so first of all we specify the list shift control down arrow to select that and then what is the criteria itself and when i'm writing these formulas just take a look at the uh the two tip right here okay it, it tells you what to do um, so it's like a helper so we need the criteria the criteria is store number 104 okay so the store number 104 is what we are looking for so we can go ahead and then close this so it says 6700 if we need the total returns for store number 103 it's 10400 and you can verify by just looking at the numbers here but then immediately we change this to number of cars you see that the result is not changing the reason is that this formula is static it's only looking at the what was there before uh, number of stores so we need to make it dynamic okay we need to make this dynamic because if somebody selects number of employees the range will be looking at column g if the person selects number of cars 
that is in column H. So this is changing. So we need to make sure that in the formula, it is dynamic as well. So now what we are looking for right now is just the total returns, which is in column F. So we need to make that part of the formula dynamic. So I'm going to adjust this formula by selecting the first cell, which says F4 to F23, because that is going to be changing each time. So I'm going to select that. And that is a range. Remove it. And I'm going to put in another formula there. Okay. So what formula gives us like a range or a value? It's the index formula, the index formula. So I'm going to start with an index formula, open the parenthesis, and then the index is looking for an array. Is an array. Where is our answer? Okay. We want to sum certain numbers. Where are those numbers? So those numbers are located from here. It could be total sales or total returns or number of employees or number of cars so we select everything okay and then we put in the comma the next argument is looking for is the row number row number how many rows do we want to sum we want to sum all the rows so we don't care about the row number per se because we want to sum everything so you put in the comma in place of the row number and then the next thing is the column number so the column number depends on what we select here. If we select number of cars, it will be column number H. If we select number of employees, it will be column number G. If we select total sales, it will be column number E. So we need to write a formula for that. And that is going to be a match because it's only the match formula that gives us a number. It gives us the location of a value. So I'm going to put in the match function. So what are we matching? We are trying to match this selection here in K6, uh, which is the number of cars. So we are matching this value here or this item here from, so the next is the lookup array. Where are we looking for number of cars? It's on the top row here. Okay. And then we bring our comma. And then what type of match do we need? We need an exact match, which is what? A zero. So we finish up with our match. We close the match. And then we need to close the index as well. Well, the index has an open parenthesis. It needs to be closed. So we close the index function. And our formula is done. We press the enter key and it says 73. So let's go and check number of cars in store number 103 is check one is here 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 one is here so when you look down in the formulas you notice that the number of cars in i think we are missing one which is this line right here so it's 73 and you can see it from here now let's take a look at another example store number 102 Card, we want to calculate the total number of returns. So total returns, it says 16,500. Let's go and check. So we are looking at store number 102. We have total returns, one here, one here, here, another one here, another one in Las Vegas, another one in Nashville, and then the last one in Philadelphia. When you look at the bottom right corner here, it's 16,500, and that is what we see here. So it means our formula is actually working so that's it uh you now know how to sum columns based on criteria and column header in excel thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this